I want to share a dream with you guys that I had a couple of nights ago. Um, it's quite strange and it was, it was pretty disturbing to me because I'm trying to figure out who or what this dream represents. Now, I fell asleep on the sofa one night. I became so sleepy all of a sudden. I'm sitting at the computer and all of a sudden this, this overwhelmingly sleepy feeling came over me. So I laid down on the sofa and I drifted off into sleep, into a deep sleep. And in this deep sleep, I dreamt that it was as if I was in my house, but it wasn't my house like it is now, but it was my house, if that makes sense to you. But I drift off into the sleep, I was in my house, and apparently in this dream, I had tried committing suicide. Okay, now I don't know who this represents. I'm keeping my eyes and ears open and maybe it's someone that's out here that need to hear this. But I tried to commit suicide and the way I did it in this dream was I had cut my neck from ear to ear. And it was like blood all over the place. And in this dream, before I realized it, I was laying in the hospital bed. It's like my house had changed over to this hospital here in Syracuse called St. Joseph Hospital. And I'm laying in this bed and I had all these tubes, these IV tubes in my arm and hooked up to me and whatnot. And my two sons were sitting on, uh, standing on the right side of me. And there was a nurse there and then another one of my family members were there. And in this dream, I felt so much hurt and pain, an, un, an indescribable amount of hurt and pain. I'm talking about deep, deep-rooted hurt and pain, just bottom pain, if I could explain it, um, if I could put it in words. I can't even put it in words, the hurt that I was feeling. and. All of a sudden, it's like I saw my face in a mirror, but it wasn't my face. And my face was covered with blood. Okay, it was as if, you know, blood was like painted on my face. And it was wet blood. It was, it was fresh blood. And I knew in this dream it wasn't me. I didn't know it in the dream, but when I woke up, I kind of figured it wasn't me because this person that I saw in the mirror had a hairline. You see, I shaved my head off, you know, my hair. So this person had a hairline. It was the hairline of a woman. And you could see like some of the blood was like just about in the hair. You could see like in the hair where the blood was there. And it was just so, it was so caked on to this person's face. And then I've seen myself laying on this hospital bed with all the, the, the tubes in me, my family around the bed. And I felt so much pain, man. I just, I put my hand over my face because my sons was on this side. So I put my hands over my face so that they couldn't see me cry. And all of a sudden I just started, just started crying, man, from, from all this deep, deep-seated hurt. And my sons have never seen me cry. So it's like, I'm, but my oldest son, he noticed and he looked at me and he had the expression on his face like, wow, you know, this is my dad, this is my hero. You know, this is, you know, that's my dad in this kind of situation. And he's crying. And, it, and his expression was just like, wow, I can't believe that this is actually my dad, you know, in this condition. And so, like, when I looked at him, I tried to dry my face up. And I looked at him. And all of a sudden, it's like, and the thing that kept standing out was the hurt, man, that I was feeling. And I was hurting so bad, it's like it just started coming out again. Then all of a sudden, I got cold. You know, and I'm like, you know, I said, I'm cold. You know, I put the covers up. I'm, I'm real cold. I'm freezing. And I was shivering. Now, usually when a person is, is in that state where they're cold like that after going through that type of injury, um, death, they're on the brink of death. So I'm like shivering and saying, it's cold in here, you know. And the nurse and my family members were saying, don't go to sleep. You know, just stay awake. Don't go to sleep. Just stay awake. And I was just hurting so bad inside. And I woke up. 
And when I woke up, I'm like, I looked around the house, and I'm like, wow, what was that? So I got up, of course, the lights were on the house. I turned the lights out, went upstairs, and got into bed. But um, the thing that really stuck to me was the blood on the face and the level of hurt that this person, this individual, was feeling. And just thought I had to share this to you, man, because it was just so weird. It was so strange. And just, uh, wow, I have never, I mean, listen, sometimes, man, we see people and we really don't know what a person is going through. You know, we hear persons hurt inside them and and a lot of times we think people should be as strong as we are. We expect them to be like we are. So we may handle the situation a certain way whereas someone else may not have that type of strength to handle that. Okay? That's where we become helpers of one another. Okay? So instead of putting our feet on someone's neck when they're down, regardless if we look at them as an enemy or what, especially if, we, if we're saying that we're the righteousness of the Most High, saying that we're children of the Most High, and we're able to look at a person that's hurting. I'm talking about deep-seated hurt, man. The hurt that I felt in this vision, man, I would never personally want to feel that. That was, I mean, that was some powerful stuff. You know, and it, and it makes you wonder um, if that's one of the reasons why people are so quick to submit themselves to drugs, alcohol, uh, suicide attempts, man. They just completely give up on life. Now, lately, I've been hearing so many people talk about how bad and miserable life is. And they they rather go to sleep and not wake up anymore. Well, that's a sign of hurt. So who in your family or that you know that is suffering, man, from hurt and anxiety and no one sees it? You know, and before you realize it, someone committed suicide, they find somebody dead, but they blew their brains out, they took an overdose or what have you, and you try to figure out, like, well, what happened? Well, because there were signs of this person being hurt, but it was ignored because we're living in a society, man, where everybody is about doing their own business. And we don't take time out or we don't have time for someone else's issues or problems. So if this person is going through that type of hurt, Yes, some of us may see it, but we'll ignore it. It's, it we, we take the attitude like, that's not my business. That's not my problem. You know, and, and we really need to work on ourselves and start looking out for one another, man. Um, you know, how could you say you love God whom you have never seen, but like hate your brother and sister who you see every day? So... I had to share that dream with you, man, because whoever this person is, man, that, that was suffering, man, that, I mean, that level of hate, man, I would never want to deal with that kind of hurt, man, because it, 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 was, it was, wow, that's all I got to say, man. Listen, till next time, take care of each other, man, and listen, don't be so quick, man, to turn your back on your brothers and sisters. Till next time. I am fearless.